Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in, Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series. As we continue through the week, we are rolling. It is Tuesday, and it is Mike and Joe. Mike D'Ambrosio sitting alongside. Good to have you here again, Mike. Good to be here. We are moving our way through the crazy Bay Area, Silicon Valley, uh, kind of old broken record in some cases of uh, the craziness. But what we're going to try to do is, uh, on an ongoing basis, uh, maybe clear some stuff up for you, bring some insight, education, what you could do, how you could navigate way around this market, because there is it is a challenging market in many different ways. And today we're going to talk about yet again, you know, the cost of living, the barrier home average medium home price, what it takes, what it costs, what do you need for a salary to afford all that stuff. And then then we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the things that are triggered by a market like this, you know, some of the happenings at open houses, some of the offers how do you look at these offers and um, kind of decipher a lot of different things? So we're gonna we're gonna hopefully navigate that for you today. Before we do that, uh, if you need anyone to help you on the real estate side, buying, selling, or maybe I say this all the time, just really talk to someone with a sound mind that understands this market and is going to talk to you logically. Get a hold of Mike. You could reach him at uh, area code four zero eight six three zero zero one zero one. Or his website, MikeDSells.com. You could go there and uh, get any more information about what's going on as well. On the finance side, if I could help you, you need to get pre-approved or maybe just, again, have a conversation about what you could afford, what is the strategy around, hopefully trying to get your offer accepted. I could help you on any of the financing questions, 408 838 You could always email joe at reradiolive.com. So this, uh, this article here, we're going to chat a little bit about today, Mike, kind of the break, be, begin things. Um. I ju- before we get to that, <laughs> I just post pulling up stats on oh, MLS. Oh, okay. There's a thousand, exactly a thousand active properties on MLS. Single Watch family. it. It's like, it's like a Wall Street ticker, though. Yeah. It could be 998. <laughs> it, it, it could be. By the end of the day, it probably <laughs> will be. So it's exactly a thousand. It's exactly okay. a thousand so that's active up. single fam. No, that's like, it's kind of down. Oh, is when it? Because I'm including... Oh, condos oh, okay. and townhouses. Got it. Okay. So um, that's crazy. That's really and without just single family homes, we're looking at. I mean, this is like someone told. I don't know if it was you or seven eighty six total. Like the, the lowest inventory in the last three or four decades or something. Pro- yeah, yeah, I believe something it. like that. I believe it. You know, we need to be at about three thousand to be considered what's a normal market. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, that's really that's interesting. As I was pulling this up. It would be, uh, my guess is if, we, you know, we could talk about that, not today, but it would be interesting to find out, like, how far back you'd have to go, Mike, to have the inventory at, like, three grand. You think it was, like, 08, 09, oh, yeah, or no. maybe we, 10 or 11? When or, the market was in the tank, we were uh-huh. at about um, 6,000. Wow. So that's, that's kind that. of the, the sway smoke. we've had. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, five or 6,000. So, it, you know, that's why we have <laughs> this situation we have today. Yeah. I mean, there's more than 786 realtors within a mile radius of where we're doing this podcast right now, let alone the entire county <laughs> of Santa Clara. So, you know, roulette. Multiple realtors, or realtors have multiple clients looking up to the same deals. That's why you have a, a competitive market. So, yeah. Oh God, man. Supply and demand. So the uh, this one article here, I think it's a Mercury News Bay Area real estate. Here we go again to buy a medium priced home. It says here you need to you need an income income of over one hundred seventy nine thousand. Yeah, <laughs> and, and again, I always these are chuckle, not not laugh because it's funny for those that are struggling with this. But you know, if you're listening to this from another state or other locations, you're thinking one hundred seventy nine thousand. 
Are you kidding me? Right. That's yeah. what that's what I could pay for a nice house. That's what people are thinking. They're not thinking about yeah, that much. That's true. <laughs> that's true. You know, I think uh, I was just having a conversation with someone I know, a friend of mine that's moving out of the area and moving up to Rockland, which is mm-hmm. over and you know outside of yeah. Sacramento. And she's like, you know, um, I'm not going to make as much up there, but I can afford to buy a house mm-hmm. over there as opposed to here, as you make more but still can't even afford to buy something here, right? So it's it's. Uh, I mean, even within an hour and a half, two hour difference of driving, you have a huge discrepancy in, you know, median income and median prices. So mm-hmm. it's pretty interesting um, when you look at it. That's a big uh, that's a big difference. I mean, there is a there is a trade off and all that. But I could certainly see why people move out of the area. If you if you could do it and you could transfer jobs, careers, businesses, um, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. But I could certainly see that. Um, I'm not sure that there's any, before we dive into more of these, and I, we've talked about it before, I guess this is probably, we're in a market where we'll just wait and see, and the market's going to do them what the market does. My point is, is we could predict till you know, till we're blue in the face, but who really knows? You know, the bubble thing, you could, you could have the bubble conversation, but then when you look at the statistical data, yeah, why would there be a bubble when you still have supply and demand in a strong market? Yeah, I mean, I don't... <laughs> That's kind of scary, but... It, it is. I've heard a lot of economists that don't see an end in sight for this area, at least. I yeah. mean, we have all the jobs here. I mean, even if there was a, a cut in jobs, we'd st- we still have a, mm-hmm. more jobs than anywhere else, and we also don't have anywhere else to build. So, I don't know. I don't... Maybe the prices won't go so high, but maybe it'll level out, but I, I don't see a downturn. I, but, you know, you can never say never. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I don't have a crystal ball, but... I mean, it really, it's kind of like a perfect scenario here for for values, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, well, let's quickly, um, let's kind of quickly go through these, maybe just to give people an idea um, across the Bay Area. And then uh, after we take a break, I want to jump in more. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the, some of the triggering mechanisms behind a market like this, some of the stuff that's happening in open houses. Um, offers, who does what, how to appropriately take those, etc. So I want to I want to pick your brain, yeah, on that a little bit. So what we have here is uh, the Bay Area really doesn't change a whole lot. Obviously, if you head up towards San Francisco, it looks like it gets worse, right? And then it sounds to me like if you start north <laughs> and then start heading your way south, it kind of mm-hmm. trickles down that way. The more further you get up north to San Francisco, the average price is. What do we got here? 1.45. San Mateos will just be below that at 1.469. <laughs> mm-hmm. Santa Clara County, 1.1. One, one. Now, there's a, they, they kind of striking difference here where the median home price, so Alameda County's 880. Is that correct? Is yeah. That right? Okay. So um, maybe, again, if someone's sitting here going, I mean, where, where, you know, within driving distance or whatever. So you have your options might be. Morgan Hill, although like you said, Morgan Hill's pretty tough now too. Maybe Gilroy, and then go on the up. If you go up the other set, side, uh, Alameda County, like you think of maybe Hayward, yeah, Fremont, Fremont, Oakland. Oh, yeah, yeah, those okay. areas, yeah. So again, you got to look at your commute depending on which way you're commuting, one way or another. But I guess potentially, if you are flexible, yeah, you either go north, Oakland, Fremont, Hayward, maybe uh, those areas, or south continue to go south county yeah the whole story is uh the whole saying is drive a little save a lot that's <laughs> yeah. what they call it yeah. a lot of people in santa cruz say that too santa cruz scott's valley you know but you're going up 17 every day so yeah it just it just depends on uh how far you want to drive and if maybe if you have a job that's flexible mm-hmm. that that you can telecommute or you can go and only go in the office a couple of days a week and you don't have to deal with the commute you know, I, I know there's a lot of people, probably people out there listening that commute in from like Central Valley mm-hmm. into this area. I mean, that's I mean to me that's just not a way to live. You're in the car a tough one. four hours a day. I mean, you're literally in the car two hours on the way there and two hours back. And I mean, that's just got to be brutal. You know, there's there's just, to me there's more important things to do in life than sit in the car for two hours. I know some people don't have a choice and. I understand that, but if you could figure out another way to do it, I would try to do that. But not to get off on a tangent, but yeah, that's it's a tough one. Unless these days, you know, a lot of these companies are endorsing um, 
you know, doing more working out of their house and virtual offices and all that. So maybe that's an option for people that it wasn't years ago. What uh, are you familiar much with the like the Santa Cruz? You mentioned Santa Cruz market. Mm-hmm. Is it just as kind of crazy as this? I mean, yeah. it's kind of typically a, but the inventory is pretty yeah, low. Yeah, the inventory is pretty low there. <clears throat> you know, but there's potential to get a deal. I mean, I just got some buyers in a contract in Scotts Valley that um, are contingent offer on selling mm-hmm. their house and. They got the the house below. Oh my God! Hold price. on, let me hold the hold, yeah. the hold the phone here. Let's <laughs> yeah. ring the bell. Yeah, they're contingent they on contingent selling offer. their house, and they got the house below list price. Wow, the wow. house they bought. So, okay. I'm not tooting my own horn, but you know, well, they got a you're good, good. Agent too. You could say it. I'll tell. I'll tell the people. <laughs> so, are they selling their house here? Then? Yeah, in Morgan Hill. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they're moving to Scotts Valley. Yeah, more uh, bigger house, Same more t- lot, bigger lot, yep. or yeah, yeah, twice the house. Twice the lot, or tri- the lot's big. It's over yeah. an acre. So yeah, I mean, just depends on what you're looking for. You know, that's very good. And the only downside, of course, that you'd mentioned, if you do have to rely on getting to and from work, and if you're working north, you you got one road and one road mm-hmm. only. Yeah, and that's Highway 17. Yep. So what else? Uh, you know, the average 179,000 income. Again, if you let that settle in. Um, most people, especially, I think this is one of the sticker shocks when someone's getting out of college that spends that kind of money on a college education. And you, know, let's face it, there's some there's some high tech jobs that maybe pay this much right out of the gate. But, yeah. Um, this is a this is a very very unique area, and I'm not sure it's going to change much. And I agree, Mike. You a couple minutes ago, I'm not sure. You know, this is not another three to five year market here yeah with this kind of craziness i agree i don't know about the escalation or the you know increase of 10 15 20 percent a year but um there's no indications unless something changes quickly yeah i mean unless something catastrophic happens whether it's world news or in the country Mm -hmm. i i don't see it you know if anyone thinks differently please reach out to us and let me know your thoughts i'm curious to see what your reasoning would be i'm I'm open but I, i really i really don't see it yeah. So, all right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back. We're going to talk a little bit more about because of this crazy market, some of the trigger mechanisms behind it. What do I mean by that? For instance, you know, multiple offers. Uh, someone like Mike holding an open house. What what ha- what what happens during that? Are we getting multiple offers? Are you getting hundreds of people through? <laughs> Who do you take? What is the offer? And uh, some of the maybe the ethical um, operations around that. This is Joe Cochera sitting alongside Mike D'Ambrosio. We'll be back with you in just a minute. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Hi, this is Joe Cochera, host of Real Estate Radio Live and Bay Area Mortgage Planner. In addition to being your home financing expert, please remember you could always contact me for other trusted advisors such as realtors, financial planners, and CPAs. Please feel free to contact me at 408-838-9060. That's 408-838-9060 or email joe at reradiolive.com or visit my website at reradiolive.com for more details. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's topic or guests, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series, sitting alongside Mike D'Ambrosio today. We're talking a little bit about... Medium home prices in the Bay Area that, surprise, surprise, keep going up. And also, uh, most recently, talking about the uh, how much income you need um, a to lot. afford. A lot. 179000 <laughs> to be exact. 179000 So some you know, some couples listening to this or a person in the Bay Area may say, okay, I understand. It's, but we've well, become a little bit jaded. I think the other big problem we didn't really talk about real quick is mm-hmm. is saving the down payment outside of... You're making that much money, but then you're paying. You're probably paying high rent, right? And then, so how are you going to save, you know, a hundred grand, two hundred grand, if that's what you, you know, if you want to do twenty percent or ten or whatever? 
So it's yeah, that's no, the hard it's, part. It's you got true. student loans and other expenses. How are you going to service like that, the debt, so. pay the rent that you pay around right. here? Unless you get your parents to build an in-law unit, That's which right. is legal, by the Listen way. Listen to our podcast <laughs> on whatever date it was. <laughs> RERadoLive.com. Go to yeah. Granny Units and look at <laughs> what you could do there. Yeah, there's all, you got to be creative. That's for sure. Find a way you could save um, save money. And sometimes, as Mike mentioned, it's not easy when you're, you know, you, you're trying to service debt uh, and you're trying. To, I mean, average rents. I don't know. That's another craziness. I mean, I, it is it is absolutely nuts to think that now again you're talking about sales prices but when people are renting homes they say joe i can't yep. find anything for less than three thousand yeah. dollars a month yeah it's crazy all right so. i want to talk a little i want to ask you mike a little bit um you're the expert um in a market like this what we have is obviously low inventory and as you do an open house i'm hearing some information feedback from realtors that are saying you know, not only you're getting 75 to 100 people through, maybe depending on the price of the home, I get that, but just the activity, the interest. Mm-hmm. Um, then, what I'm also hearing is, for instance, over the weekend, I heard there was uh, 10 to 12 um, potential buyers that come in, and they automatically will will make a beeline towards the the <laughs> listing re- agent, representing yeah. agent. Yeah. And so what I'm hearing is some of the conversation goes like what they try to do is since they know it's a competitive market mm-hmm. and they understand the ins and outs of what's going on, they think for some reason they're going to have some advantage or benefit by going to the agent that's representing or listing the house yeah. and saying, hey, is there a way that we could strike a deal? Mm-hmm. And you and I both know what they're trying to do. They're trying to entice that agent to think, well, gee, maybe I could double in this and make more money and yeah. all that. We've got into that before. but. So we know what happens. The mm-hmm. other thing I talked about when we were off air, and, and I'll bring it up, is the thing that, that's kind of bothered, it's not the kind of it is, is that they'll do this knowing full well that they're already working with an agent. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's the sad part. Um, so how, number one, we know what goes on. I mean, it's part mm-hmm. of this craziness. It's annoying. I mean, yeah. frankly, it really is. I mean, to be honest, it's I I don't do a lot of open houses anymore. Uh-huh. Um it's just I've grown out of that part of my business right. plan, and and uh, and so, but I just did one this last week, and I, you know, so there's certain ones that I do, and, yeah, and it, it happens all the time, and frankly, it just it get, to me as an agent, mm-hmm. it, it number and you as a buyer, it starts off with a bad taste right off the bat okay. when you try to do that. Yeah, because it's one. good for the consumer to understand, yeah, what they're doing. They may not know. Um, what the perception is. So that's yeah. why I wanted you to share so, with and, them. And these, this is all my opinion. But yeah. So then the other thing is, look, uh, dual agency is legal in California. Mm-hmm. It is a legal thing to do. A lot of people, a lot of realtors do it. I don't personally do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really don't believe in it. Now, with the side note to that, uh, it is considered dual agency if, like, another Intero agent rep- and from one of our Correct. corporate offices that's does disclosed. it. But to me, that's... It's a different it's agent, different. you know. And then yeah. the other the other times are when dual agency is is in my opinion okay, or, or I can see mm-hmm. doing it, or why people do it is if uh, two parties already come together and you're more of a referee than anything. I see. Um, which doesn't happen very often because you usually need an agent to hash out all the other BS right. that's in a contract. <laughs> so so with all that being said, I I don't believe in dual agency because. It is our fiduciary duty as the listing agent mm-hmm. to get our seller the highest and best price right. possible with the best terms. So how are we going to uh, possibly do that if we're representing you as the buyer? Right. It's impossible. It really is impossible. So so then you have these buyers coming in that think they're getting a good deal because, okay, maybe you discount your commission to the seller a percent or something like that. But what, what they're not – they're totally blind to is that – they're passively getting hosed on the price because mm-hmm. that agent's trying to get his seller the best price. Right. Does that make sense? So yeah. like, it's like they're too—I don't know—they're too smart for their own good to even realize that. Oh, I'm g- the seller's going to save some commission. I'm going to get a better deal, but it doesn't work that way, yeah. really, in my opinion. So it's really kind of sad to be honest, and I'm and and. I'm probably going to piss some people off by saying this, but if you're out there doing that stuff and you already have an agent, you're disloyal to your agent, you're trying to get a deal out there, I think you should be ashamed of yourself personally. Yeah, um, I, would, I I think this is part of the show with education, and I hope that everybody kind of listens to this because this is something that Mike does for a living 
Uh, he knows what he's doing. And here's the part that I want to talk to you a little bit about, too, that people miss. And I think this is this is the side where before, I mean, all of us at one time in our life, maybe we think we're kind of, uh, you know, all guns blazing loaded and we know better than, than a certain uh, group or industry. Let's face it, whether it's, hey, I know this stock, I don't need a financial planner, or I know this company or I'm building. Here, here's my take on this where I'll, I'll use it for an educational process here. Yeah. So what they don't understand is they're actually, to me, they're giving themselves a worse chance or opportunity to get that house by approaching those people independently, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. here's what I, and this is, you're going to, but I'll, I'll go through my kind of checklist and you could tell me if I'm correct or if there's stuff you want to add. Number one, if you go with an agent that you're working with, that agent, most likely a good agent knows the market. They're going to know what you're going to should come in with an offer. They're going to know what it potentially takes to get that offer because they know what maybe these homes are going for. Like they may say, okay, these homes in this area are going for an average of 12 to 15% over, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my point here, if you enter that process with more education and professional thought into making an offer, you actually might have a decent chance at getting that home instead of thinking you're going to mm-hmm. negotiate someone. Yeah. And reduce commissions and right. put someone in conflict. Right. Does that exactly. Make sense? No, I totally agree. I think if you have professional representation on the buy yeah. side, it's going to help you get the deal more so than the right. other way. I totally yeah. agree with what right. you're saying. You know, because to ha- it's a whole process now to put together an offer package and present the package, mm-hmm. and and there's all sorts of things needed within that package and how you present it and and the relationships with the agents that know each other. And so, I mean, there's a whole. It's a whole dance this whole purchase scenario. So, you know, yeah, the, I totally agree with what you're saying. And it's just, uh, you're giving yourself a better opportunity with better, Mm -hmm. with representation on, on one side. Um, you know, as a, as a, myself, as I'm primarily a listing Mm -hmm. agent, as a listing agent, we get, I mean, people get throw that at me all the time, you know, it's like, Oh, if I work with you, this this, and that. And I'm like, no, I don't do that. Um, I can introduce you to someone that can help you. Um, but it's not something that I'm interested in. And, and, uh, and and again, I'm not, I'm not out here to trash on any agents that do double end. Um, Mm -hmm. there's, like I said, there's certain scenarios that sometimes lend to it. And I understand that, but there are some agents out there that, uh, agents that really, they, they seek it out and they're, and it's almost, um, I think it's bad practice, you know, and, uh, and they're exposing themselves to potential litigation or lawsuits in the future. If there's conflict of interest there, if some party gets squirrely, I mean, they're going to be looking at that agent that double ended the deal. You know, they're going to be, they're going to be answering to the attorneys that are pissed off how much the realtor is making because the attorney's not even making as much as him. I was along. And they hose them. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. You say that along the same lines, kind of, I was reading an article today that was specifically was talking about how there's more litigation coming potentially in this industry because of the teams. The, the article oh, yeah. is talking yeah. about that people, because they have teams, let's say you have four or five people on a team, yeah. then a lot of times they'll have a, they'll bypass their broker of record, yeah. they set of stuff, and, and, and running things past he or she yeah. to get final approval. They'll just say, well, i got a team, and I think so. And so. Now, the point was, I think uh, you have to be careful, too, um, in a situation like that, that dual agency. Yeah. If you automatically think it's, a, it's okay, right, um, and you get caught in the trap, um, it could be an issue. Yeah. So I think the theme, the story, the objective we're talking about today is when you're buying something this expensive and it's such a huge, huge investment and it's a big risk. Also, let's face it, if you're buying a home and you're paying a 15 to 20 percent premium over what the market tells you what it is right now, uh-huh. right? Make sure that you do it the best you can. And I, and I know it happens. Yeah. But if you know you're going in, that's what's taking place. You understand the market. You have the money to support it. You're represented well. I, the point is, is people overpay, Mike, for things all the time mm-hmm. or maybe pay a little bit of a premium. But that's part of our market in the world and global economy. Yeah. If you're educated and you understand what you're getting yeah. into. No, I point. think so. And and I want to make two more points on the whole yeah. hot, hot market. And I, I do want to talk about what you just said. But the first thing is is the whole no contingency thing too is a whole we could do a whole nother show on that right is the 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 risk of that it's it's going on a lot and that and so just be careful be cognizant of that but that kind of goes into 
um, this market is very competitive. And so often people, I'm going to defend our, our industries now because often people target the real estate industry, the lending industry mm-hmm. as the predators of this yeah. whole situation. You got me into as, this. <laughs> as, why, as to why the median price is a million right. five in Santa Clara County. It's our fault. Right. Well, look. You guys out there as the buyer, well, I'm not saying you guys, you guys are just listening to the podcast, Consumer. but, but the buyers out there, you are the pro, you're part of the problem. You're right. the ones that are paying 15% over the list mm-hmm. price and driving prices up. You're the ones pushing to do no contingencies and take those risks. And, and, and yeah, sometimes realtors or lenders might advise them to do that, you know, um, but it's not just, the people on our side of the yeah. table, it's, it's a whole pro- Everyone's a part of the problem. So it's easy to throw it back onto the realtors and the lenders. But I, I would guess nine times out of 10, 99% of the time, th- they're not holding a gun to your head to sign those papers. So. No, plus let's face it. We're not that smart and brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to take credit for yeah. it, but you and I both, when a market goes up like it does or rates come down or someone pays 20% over market. It's not because Mike and I devised that yeah. strategy. It's because the market dictated it. Right. That's exactly why it's happening. So his point is well taken in that, you know, these run-ups are because there's supply and demand and people have money and they're they're purchasing these properties. Yeah. Before we, we duck out here real quick, and we all saw what happened. Um, that's why there was a slew of lawsuits and people coming after you, to give the example you did, of lenders and realtors, mm-hmm. because he, what happened? They paid at the top of the market, and then when it crashed, they wanted yeah. to look around for someone to yeah, make it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. And I'm not saying there isn't bad, there isn't some oh, yeah, right. bad guys sure. out there. But there always is. Um, you know, yeah, for yeah. the most part. That, so anyways, i got to go have a drink now. <laughs> <laughs> or two. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks again for tuning in. This is Joe Cachero sitting alongside Mike D'Ambrosio. As always, if you want more information, go to reradiolive.com. Keep spreading the word, letting us know, and uh, give us some feedback as well. Until next time, take care. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.